Hello everyone. Of course I've started and my voice is just cracked already, but that's just that's just how things go sometimes. So thank you for joining me today. Um, let me take a little sip to help us out. Hang on. <clears throat> that hopefully is better. <laughs> um, thank you for joining me for a live stream. This is our first live stream and our first video for 2024. And I have a lot to talk through, but before we do, I do want to stop and say hello to those of you who jumped in early. So we'll uh, maybe take five minutes before I sort of get into the real details of everything, just to give enough people time to jump in. So I wanted to start by saying hello to Caitlin, who is one of our amazing members. So Caitlin, thank you so much for jumping in and for being a part of this and being a part of the Discord and everything as well. I really appreciate it. Um, we've also got a lot of other people that have jumped in today. Sandra Gordon is here. Sandra is one of our amazing moderators over in our Facebook group. So please say hello to Sandra as well. Also, we've got Kristen on the chat who um, works with me and is our community manager. So if you do have any like tech support related questions or order questions, she's already mentioned here, please don't post them in the chat because it just isn't something I'm going to be able to help you with during the live. Instead, you can email um, hello at sarahnaclark.com and Kristen is amazing at helping with that and um, getting help with whatever you need. So please do that instead so that we can keep this chat more for the video and for all of us to have fun. Uh, Rebel Rose Girl, hello. Nice to see you. So um, wonderful to see you back. I remember you joined us for one of our other live streams as well. Charlotte, hello. Um, Victoria, hello. Charlotte, I'm guessing you're from, Can no, I thought you might've been from Canada. Yes, you are from Canada. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm reading the comments. You've all, you're all probably aware of what's going on. Um, we've got a, a bunch of different things here. Sarah Chalk, I swear I thought that said Sarah Clark for a second. No, <laughs> we're not the same. Um, so we've got people from all different time zones around the world, which is really exciting. Hello, Carissa. Um, Kirsten King is here as well. Kirsten is also on our team. She does a lot of the amazing graphic design and is helping me at the moment make some plans for some of the new products that we are working on. So Kirsten, good to see you join us. Um, Patrick is here. Alexa is here. Not that Alexa, stop. <laughs> I'm guessing this is a problem. You probably have a lot, right? <laughs> Hi, Jessica. Hi, Manuel. 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 <laughs> Dawn. Mary. Um, Natalie. Not Natalie from here. Natalie from somewhere else, I'm assuming. <laughs> nice to see you joining us today. Um, Laurie's here. Uh, Camilla. Carissa. Oh, there are so many people here joining us and that is really awesome. I really appreciate it when you guys all come in and join my streams and chat with me live because it makes this way more fun for me. Frankie, another one of our members. Good to see you. Um, by the way, with our members, we do have, and I'll be talking about some of our plans this year with um, like our membership and our Discord, but we do have a great group of people and we have a Discord where we can all share our own stuff and chat and um it's really cool. And um, we also have Sparkling Rose Creations from Western Australia. Another one of our members are here. If you guys are interested in the membership, you can find out more about that on my channel um, because you do get that nice little pencil next to your name so I can see your comments with a bit more emphasis. And um, yeah, it's really cool to see you guys a part of this as well. So Valentine's World is here. Sheila's here from Nova Scotia. Bridget is here from the Netherlands. So many different places. Portugal, Ica, Ica, Ica. <laughs> um, Kirsten, Mrs. French. Nay, another one of our mem members. Yes, that little pencil is really cool and it changes color the longer that you've been here. <laughs> um, and so Renee's from Perth. So good to see you, Renee, and good to see you join us here. I think we can probably, I know that a lot of other people are saying hello. Please continue to say hello and let us know where you're from. Um, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat, but I think we're probably good to actually start talking about what's happening because I know a lot of you are very curious. So I want to start by saying that we do have a lot of, um, I guess they are pretty significant changes happening this year with the way we're doing YouTube. 
But at the same time, I know at the moment there have been a lot of videos from a lot of YouTubers, like a, like a lot. I think I've come across at least 10, maybe even 15 of people who are either changing everything that they're doing this year or they are downscaling or they are quitting YouTube. And I want to start by saying that the news that I have, I hope that you will all be really excited about. I'm not leaving YouTube. Please don't worry about that. Um, but this is actually stuff that the timing of this is not relevant to the fact that everyone else is making similar announcements. That's just kind of how it worked out. We have actually been talking about this change in my team since September, and we always plan to launch it in January. And we thought that a live stream was the best way to talk through what's happening. Partly because then I can just speak from my heart, I can get your feedback and your questions, and we can just sort of talk this through together so that I can make sure that I don't leave you worried in any way or thinking that things are changing in a way that you're not happy with and we can talk it all through. I also just wanted to stop and say, welcome to our membership, The Prepping Artists. I'm very excited to have you join us. Um, always really exciting when we have new members. I absolutely love it. And we will come to more of that um, shortly. I think I need to maybe just uh, put a few, they're not rumors, but comments of questions. <laughs> so let's just eliminate some things. One, I am not moving to America. No, that's not happening. I'm sorry. Uh, and I am not pregnant, as has also been asked in the comments. Can we maybe just put to rest the idea of when any woman makes an announcement that it's probably pregnancy related? Because I know when my youngest was two or three years old, there was one year and I got asked if I was pregnant 12 times and that was not fun. <laughs> so let's just stop asking that question for everyone on behalf of all women. Do not ask a woman if she's pregnant. Let's just keep it at that. <laughs> um, Camilla, welcome to our membership as well. Oh, it's so exciting to actually just um, see more people joining this year. I'm really excited for this. I was going to interrupt and tell you about that. Uh, Shane's here as well, everyone. Hi, <laughs> Shane's, everyone. Shane's here and I've told him he needs to chat as well during this Kay Jun Hawk is also joining our gold membership. So we'll see you in Discord as well. And you will now have opened up access to all of the other live streams and behind the scenes stuff that we have in our members area that's from silver and above. So there's extra live streams there. There's extra videos there as well. Um, Pam, I'm sorry to hear that you are in hospital, but I hope that you have a quick recovery, whatever is going on. Um, but yes, Shane is here as well because he is so much a part of what happens here and live streams are a great excuse to hear his voice. Now getting him on camera is a bigger step. We can work towards that. Maybe, maybe we need to set up like a bid for how much Shane needs. <laughs> Just having a microphone here was like enough of a step for me. <laughs> we, there may be some convincing to get Shane out, although he wasn't prepared to be on camera. So he might be in his pajamas for a while. I don't, I don't know. Um, but he is here, so he could chime in. Because I just, it's more fun. It's, I love, this is actually what we love about doing live streams. Um, and just again on the uh, the rumors to put down, <laughs> we're not moving to the UK either. I'm sorry, Delaney. I would love to be your next door neighbor, but no. <laughs> um, so the prepping artists will be joining us as well in Discord. I'm very excited about that. I want to talk about, so I'm just going to actually, you know, what, I'm just going to put this down for a second because I'm very distractible. <laughs> I'm still reading. Shane is still reading and I will open it up again shortly. So Shane will let me know if there are any like massively exciting things to share. But I do want to make sure that I actually have a chance to talk through what is happening. Um, and I don't want to be distracted during that for a little bit. We'll have pockets. So last, so, so. So we are making some changes this year and they are very exciting changes, but I do want to say for a start, I'm not quitting YouTube. We're not moving country. I'm not pregnant. And these changes have nothing to do with the changes that are happening with so many other creators across YouTube. So for context in September last year, I had the opportunity with Shane to head over to America and we spent some time at the Vid Summit conference, which is where we got to hang out with a lot of other creators. We got to hang out with people that we've built friendships with over the past few years, also meet a whole bunch of amazing new people. And we had a lot of really good conversations about our content. And one of the things that I noticed is when people asked me, what I did. It's a hard question, right? What do you do? 
It's always been a hard question as a YouTuber to answer. What do you do? Because you have to decide is the person you're talking to aware of YouTube and that it's actually a business or are they just going to think it's some like vague hobby? Or so do I say that I make coloring books? Do I say that I'm an artist? Do I say that I'm a YouTuber? It's, it's always a bit complicated. But at a YouTube conference, it's less complicated because everyone understands the economy of YouTube. They understand that you can build a business out of this. So generally the question is more, what's your channel about? And I found myself struggling to answer this question, not because I didn't know the answer. I've actually answered this question many times in the past very confidently. But for the first time, I found myself feeling like the channel that I have and the channel that I want to have are not entirely aligned. And this really challenged me. I would tell people I take coloring books and I turn them into epic art. But then it was like, but that's that's not all I do. I also... I want to explore creativity and try new arts and look at different ways and take people on a journey and help beginner artists to discover their own creativity in within them um, and all these things. And it's like, that's really hard to summarize. And then I stopped and was wondering, well, is that actually what my channel does represent? So we had a lot of really big team talks and I talked with other people as well to get their feedback on this in this space. And I sort of came to the realization that a lot of the videos that I had made while they were fun, they weren't the videos that when I'm showing someone new my channel that I was excited to show them. You know, I had the, a few of them where it was like, oh uh, yeah, that one was for a trend or that one was for this or um, that's not my best one. No, this is my best one. And I found myself almost embarrassed by a few of my videos, which I'm not, I'm not embarrassed by my videos. But when it came to talking to people that I really admired and sharing with them what my channel was about, it felt like a lot of my videos had become quite superficial and didn't, I mean, I don't even think they are, but on the surface maybe, I don't know. This is something I was kind of struggling with of like, is my channel what I want it to be? And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that the videos that I was personally the most proud of on my channel were the ones that received all the comments from people saying that they were encouraged, that they were excited to try this for themselves, or um, the ones that really made an impact in, in a different way. So like one of my favorite videos last year is when we actually went to Perth and we surprised Aussie Crafter and we bought her um, a whole bunch of art supplies and it was a really fun video. And to be honest, that video hasn't done very well in views compared to our other videos. It wasn't a viral video. But from the start, I said, I don't care because that's not why we did that. We didn't do that video because we thought it would get massive views. We did that video because that's the core of who we are. Generosity is such a value for me that is so ingrained in me and so personal that that video was like, we are on YouTube so we can make this video. We didn't make this video to grow the YouTube. And I think about that and I think about the other videos where, you know, even in the videos where I'm having fun or I'm doing a challenge, it excites me so much to hear people say that they were encouraged and that they are going to start something new because of what I did. What I don't like is when I get the comments saying I could never be as creative as you or I, I'm not a creative person, you know, you're really talented and, and they put me on a pedestal and I actually really hate that. <laughs> it's actually one of my almost pet peeves when people put me up here and put themselves down here because that's not why I do any of this. That's not why I'm here. And so thinking about our content, we're not burnt out. This is not a, we need to change everything because we're exhausted. I will admit last year was a lot. And I do think that like, I personally need to build in a bit more time for rest, but I think that I've also like, we're getting ahead of that way before it's an issue. We're not worried. I, you don't need to worry about that. <laughs> um, I'm very big on let's build a sustainable business and let's build something that we can do this for many, many years to come. This decision for me in adjusting our approach to everything was more about what's the kind of channel that I want to build for the world? What's the kind of legacy that I want to leave? And what do I want people to think of when they think of my channel? So for me, that means... I don't really want to ch chase trends. 
I did the one color series for a little bit and I really enjoyed that. But honestly, after I did two or three videos, I was like, I feel like I've kind of done this now. I don't really want to do more. And everyone's like, do this color next, do this color next. And I'm like, ah, I don't really want to because I really enjoyed that challenge and pushing myself out of my comfort zone to do one color. But I didn't want to just do it because it was a trend and because it was a series and because it's guaranteed views that people watch the next one. It was like, I don't know. I feel like once I've done this a few times, I think we did four or five. It's then just the same. And I'm not about chasing trends. I don't, I never want to make a video only because this video will get the views. Um, I've also kind of struggled with shorts in that way because I see the value in doing shorts and I don't want to disregard that they are an amazing tool. And that I know for me, a lot of the time when I'm looking for information, I appreciate if someone can put it in a short because it's just quick and it's to the point. At the same time, we haven't quite worked out how they fit for us. I tried a bunch of different stuff late last year um, with the help of my team. And some of the stuff that blew up really big was the stuff that I was like, yeah, but that's not, that's not the channel I want. I don't want to go viral for something that I'm a bit ashamed of. I would rather have less views and make sure that every short has a point that they actually are useful in some way or, or entertain, entertaining because entertainment is also important, right? But that people walk away feeling better about watching it rather than feeling like they wasted their time. And so this is something that we've been thinking about a lot. I look back at the videos last year that did the best and the videos that I'm proud of. And actually a lot of our biggest videos were videos that I really enjoyed. We poured a lot of effort in. I know this wasn't even last year. I think it was the year before, but like the video where I tested every colored pencil, I loved doing that because for me, that was a level of detail and it took us so many weeks and it was almost this obsessive level of detail that I put in and that is entirely who I am. I love to go all in on something. What I don't like is when we have a two week deadline or even a one week deadline back when we were doing weekly videos where I now feel like I have to rush something or not give something my attention and not give my all as I love to do because we have to just get a video out. And last year you'll notice we already cut back a lot on the amount of videos that we were doing. I made a very conflicting decision in January last year that instead of posting every week, we would maybe try every two weeks. And that was one of the most liberating things for our whole team because suddenly we could actually make the videos that we wanted to make rather than trying to fill a video every week, which became really stressful the year before and we didn't know what to do with it. We even tried making some reaction videos, which I deleted one of them off my channel because I was so... It was just not the video I wanted to make. So instead we made less. And I think the videos last year are some of my favorite videos that we've ever made because we made less videos. And once we got to two weeks gap, I found that there were some weeks that it was like, we just need an extra week to really put our heart into this video. So some of the videos became three weeks apart. And I think for me, that was one of the first things where we realized that we don't have to be tied to a schedule. We don't have to be tied to this fear that everyone has of the algorithm. And especially because we also have products that support our business, we haven't needed to take sponsors. And that for me has been an amazing thing that we can offer the value that we do in our videos without feeling like we're selling out, which to be clear, I don't think that creators taking sponsors is selling out, but I know that's how people feel sometimes in watching them and in also the creators themselves feel guilty sometimes that they rely on sponsors. That's just the way that being a YouTuber works. For a lot of people, that is the best source of income because AdSense isn't, the ads that you watch at the videos is not usually enough to build a big revenue source of people. And if someone is only relying on that money, they are very tied to trying to make videos that work for the algorithm. And when I say algorithm, I really mean audience. I mean that if you don't pick the right thumbnail and right title, people don't watch your video, you literally earn less money. And that's, that means that this whole business is very, very hard for a lot of people because while it might seem fun to just be a YouTuber and do what you want, that's actually not really the reality once you turn it into a business. When you're relying on the money, people then need to follow the videos that get them the views. And that leads a lot of people to make videos they don't want to make or to burn out for those other reasons. And we've been really blessed in that we don't run that race. I have never worried. I might be disappointed, but I've never worried if our video doesn't get the views. And it can be really hard when some of the videos that we pour the most effort into are the ones that just don't quite work on YouTube. That's just, that's just how it works. Um, 
we never know the amount of effort you put in doesn't necessarily equal more or less views. That's just how YouTube is. That's just the reality of life when you're making videos for a bunch of people and they have to connect with it in some way. So we've actually, I think, been really good in the past year of disconnecting from that a bit in a really healthy way. I think if you watch my video last year, this time, I did a video about how I felt that I failed because the year before, I think this was the year before, I might even be two years out <laughs> because I felt really disappointed because I'd set a public goal to reach 100,000 subscribers at that point and we missed the goal only by like a month. But because I'd made it such a public goal, I felt like I'd failed my audience because I took them on that journey. Instead, last year, we took our eyes off all of that. I did for a long time work on how can we sort of get to know the um, analytics, get to understand how the algorithm works, get to understand what kind of videos are working best for our channel. But ultimately, when it came to the decision-making time, when a video comes out, I didn't look at the analytics straight away. I didn't look at um, the views so much, as much as I would actually stop and read the comments. Because for me, that's where the real information comes on what you guys wanna see, what you're finding valuable. And sometimes that means that my favorite videos and even your favorite videos don't have as many views as the others on the channel. So, I mean, that's a lot of talk about the algorithm and about YouTube, I'm sorry, but I guess this is all just part of this journey and talking through what this means. But I think over December, we actually finally passed 300,000 subscribers. And I'll be honest, I wasn't even watching. I think it was Shane that told me, hey, by the way, we clocked over the 300,000 because for the first time ever um, this past year, I haven't been looking at the numbers and it has been far more exciting for me to think about building a channel and building videos that we want to make and that I'm excited to make for you rather than looking only at the data and saying we can't do that again because that didn't work or we have to do that or we need the money, so we need to get a whole bunch of sponsors in. The only sponsors I want are sponsors that are such a good fit for our content that I would share them without the money. And in the future, that will be the only kind of sponsors that we run, is sponsors that I am so excited to work with because I think that they're gonna provide something amazing for you. Other than that, we're gonna use our products to fund what we do. And that's what we've been doing for a while. And so we will continue to do that. So when it comes to the new, because I've talked a lot about what we're, what we're not doing. Um, so what is our plan for this year, I guess, is the question. So one of the big things that I really loved last year um, is, and again, not the best performing stuff, but I loved when I had the chance to try new things. I loved when I could spend a day and even talk to other artists and learn to paint. There was a video where I spoke to four different artists and I tried a bunch of different painting styles and it was about a week I spent on all of them, but I had a lot of fun. And for me, sorry, <laughs> for me, there's a lot of, um, a lot of what I do has always been about helping you to get inspired and be creative. And I feel like when I do my coloring, sometimes there just ends up being this separation of I can do this and you maybe can't. That, I don't want that separation. Whereas I feel like when I try something new, I get to be the beginner again. I get to fail, I get to be uncomfortable, I get to do those things that stretch me and challenge me and ultimately grow my creativity. But I also get a chance to connect with you again in that maybe you're wanting to try something new, maybe you're a little bit scared to jump out and just have a go and that's what I wanna help. I wanna help people overcome that. But I look at those videos last year and I still feel like I wish I gave them more time. I wish rather than just doing um, acrylic painting for a day, I could do it for a few weeks and really get to know it. So that's one of the things I want to do this year. I want to, let's say mixed media is one example. I want to take mixed media and I want to explore it over a month. I want to talk to people that do it. I want to put myself in their world, find out why they love this art. Why is this special to them? How can you be creative with this? And how does someone get started in something like this? But then also do it for long enough that I can actually create something amazing and not just like, I need to give it the value and the credit that it deserves for every art because people spend their whole life working towards one art form. So for me to just dabble in it in a couple of days doesn't do it justice and I want to do art justice. I wanna do that creative process justice for all the people that includes. So this year, that means I wanna spend more time on those projects and spend more time doing the art, doing the creative thing. But we can't possibly do that with a video every week or even every two weeks. 
So we have decided to pull back and treat this channel more like a series. And 2024 will be the first season and it will only have maybe 12 episodes, maybe one a month. But each of those episodes, you can guarantee that I will pour my heart into, like some of the biggest videos I've done, maybe even more. And I will explore a topic so much deeper than I ever have before so that together we can go on a journey and explore what creativity means as a whole at a much deeper level. Because I do think that sometimes we can put creativity in a box. We can think that creativity equals artistic. And I'm sure that watching this, you know that that's not necessarily the case, but I want to explore what does it actually mean to be creative? So the first video that I'm actually working on right now with my team, I have written, not written, I have 10,000 words of notes that I am sorting through and like gathering. I have spoken to multiple other people, both artists and other YouTubers that you might not consider traditionally creative type roles. Um, we're also going into the Melbourne city next week and we're just going to speak with people on the street and find out what does creativity mean to them? Do they see themselves as creative people? And we're going to explore creativity in the first video and just actually figure out how do you, how do we define what that is? What does that mean? And why is it important? But also how can we increase it? If you're someone who feels like you're not creative, how can you become creative? And this is a video that I'm really excited about and like most of our videos next year, I don't want this to just be something that you watch and go, that was cool. I want it to be something that you stop and watch and then want to share with someone because it spoke to you or it challenged you or it helped you in some way that maybe you watch it a second time that, that instead of just watching it on your phone, you might stop and go, I'm going to watch this one on TV because these videos have a lot more heart put into them, a lot more time. And I want it to be that instead of me making a video and trying to get the thumbnail just right so that everyone wants to watch it, that I don't even need to worry about that, although I will, because I love doing that. But the, the thumbnail would be, I guess, another chance for me to express my creativity rather than a panic moment of, if I don't get this thumbnail right, no one's gonna watch this video. I want you to watch the videos because you know that if I'm making the video, that it's gonna we're gonna go all in. And that any topic I do, we're going to go all in and I'm gonna make sure it's valuable to you. And that's what I wanna do this year. So it means a lot less videos, but I believe and I'd like to have you join me on this journey that these videos will be far more in depth than we've ever done, that we will explore art in a way that I've never explored before. And, and, and maybe in a way that I don't know if anyone has done this on YouTube before, this is a very big thing. This is a risky change for me because I don't know if all the people who watch me because of my coloring books will be excited to come on this journey or whether they'll just say, I wish you went back to what you used to do. So we could very well be stepping into this year and like essentially killing our channel with this. But I also look at it and go, I can't keep doing what I'm doing because it's it won't be exciting forever. I am still enjoying it. I am still enjoying everything that we've just done. But if I wanna be doing this in five years time, I need to make sure that these are videos that I love and I'm excited about regardless of whether they're going to get more views or less. I'm hoping that as a result of us making this shift and even focusing on less videos, putting more in, that it will grow the channel. But I don't know. It's a risk we're taking. And it's a risk that I guess I'm, I'm excited and scared for. I know Shane feels the same. It's exciting, but it's also a very unknown thing for us. And it is kind of scary. And we don't really know what some of these videos are going to look like yet, but we're ready to find out. So I do have a lot more notes here, but I do want to pause because there's been a lot that I've just unraveled and I'm sure you have comments and Shane can chime in too if this stuff while I sort of unpack <laughs> a little bit because I've just told you a lot here. Um, Shane? Um, unfortunately, everybody left while you're talking. That's it. Channel's over. <laughs> just kidding. Um, we had while you were talking a super chat and we have a couple of new members. So that's Amazing. really cool. Amazing. Um, and a lot of people giving some really good feedback, which I've, I've been reading the whole time. So that's, that's really helpful. And um, we really appreciate everyone who watches this channel and everyone who's a part of it. Yeah. I think um, overall, I like to think that 
when we start really putting the time into videos that people will see that. And I think if anyone's worried that this won't be me and what I've done before, don't worry because ultimately this is actually more of me. I am at heart a nerd and I love to dive deep. I mean, if you look back to our testing every color pencil video, you would have seen the spreadsheets of just when I like, I like to be detailed and I want to bring that to our new videos as well. Um, they might look a little bit different, but if anything, they're going to be more of me, more research, more let's go nerd out on a topic and really, really get into this topic rather than just, just hitting the surface. And we'll still be doing live streams with you doing art and coloring and all of that stuff that people like to just yeah. have on and relax to. Yeah. So as an extension to this, so I guess that's kind of my heart in all of it, but let me, let me get a little practical for a moment and tell you about some of the other things that we are going to do this year. So for one, we want to live stream more. I know that we said that last year as well, to be honest with everything we did last year, we didn't have time. And this is one of the other reasons why we've reassessed a bit this year and said, if we do less big videos, we can then put time into some other things that we want to put more time into. One of those is we want to do more live streaming. A lot of that live streaming will happen in our membership area, but I also want to make sure we do some live streams here in the public on this channel. And that will be where I still bring in a lot of coloring books, or I will take you on a journey that maybe is a part of something that I'm working on for a video and we can do it together. Um, the members will get a lot more of that behind the scenes stuff but we will be doing public live streams as well. And I want to make sure we do more of them because we actually love this and love, um, love chatting with you all. Um, what else do we have? So the other thing is in next year, we really want to work more on um, building more value with our members. So I mentioned earlier that we have Discord and I'm planning on jumping in and setting up some times where we can all just jump in the voice chat and the Discord and just hang out while you're doing whatever you're doing. Um, it's not something that we mentioned was a feature in, in the paid plans, but we've already got Discord there. We've got everyone in there. I'd love to just come in and chat sometimes just in the voice rooms. Um, we also, with my Teal members, we do a quarterly catch up where we jump on Zoom and have a conversation. And to be honest, I've had one person in those rooms. It is a very, very small group in our Teal thing. So it is a massive opportunity to actually get heaps of just like, at the moment it's one-on-one -on -one time with me, but you know, as we get more Teal members, it'll be a slightly bigger group. But that's something that I actually really loved last year. Um, we got to get to know a few of our members so well through those little times and it was so much fun. Um, so I want to do more there and, and just work on being a part of our community more because you guys ultimately are everything to us in this channel. Like without you, this doesn't exist and we are so grateful for every video you watch, every comment you leave, every time you share something, but we want to make sure that we're giving back to you as well. Cause this is not like a one way thing. Uh, I'm not here and you're here. We're in this together. You are a part of this channel and I want to make sure that we make you feel like a part of this channel. Um, so Elmo, or is it, <laughs> I always see it as an Elmo. <laughs> Um, really nice to see you again. Thank you for the super chat. You are a perfect example of someone who has been so active in our community and I greatly appreciate your support. I see your comments on every video and I love it. I and don't think I remember a live stream you've done where an Elmo hasn't been a part of it. You're right. I, I agree. That's so cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's something that, um, Someone's already demanding Moscow. Moscow is asleep. We're going to leave him for a bit. We can bring him in at the end. It's fine. Um, some of the other things that we are going to do as a part of this as well. So um, as I've discovered already with this first video, like I said, I've got 10,000 words of notes and comments from the interviews that I've done with people. That's a lot to put on YouTube. So we are expecting that because we are going so much more in depth in every video this year, that they're going to be bigger videos and they're going to be longer videos. But... I also think that some of what I want to do maybe won't fit well on YouTube because there is an algorithm. People do come and watch a little bit and then leave and YouTube goes, oh, maybe people don't like this video. So that's something that we have to think about. So one of the things we've decided to do in that is we are going to, in some cases, put like a 20 or 30 minute video on YouTube 
and then we will put a longer, maybe 30 or 40 minute, or maybe longer if it gets longer, I don't know, video on Nebula. Nebula is the streaming platform that I've been a part of for a little while now. It is owned by creators. Um, it is an amazing place. And it's, oh, Shane, it's like what? $15 a year? I probably shouldn't say that without confirming that. I'll put that. a link in there, but it, I think it's like a couple of bucks a month. It's, it's, it's so actually cheap. It's re like much cheaper than Netflix or anything like that. And there's heaps of original content on there. And so we want to do more with that. And we want to include much bigger in-depth extended versions of every episode we do over on our channel on Nebula. Um, and if you, so um, Shane's just put as me, sorry, if you see his comments from Sarah and A. Clark, they're probably from Shane, just so that you know. Um, Shane's put my link to Nebula. You're very good at multitasking. I, I multitask. See, I do it with my brain. The brain just re... That'll be the thing one day. Let's face it. Um, so, like, if you do want to see the extended stuff and you use that link, which we'll put in the videos as well, to join Nebula, we actually get an extra um, amount, an extra portion of your sign-up fee comes directly to our channel. So... As we've said, we're not taking sponsors. This is going to be another way that we're going to bring in some funds to be able to put more time into those videos. And as a thank you to the people that sign up to Nebula, we will have extended videos over there. Um, I can't talk much about it, but I am also in the process of talking with the team at Nebula about maybe working on an original series. That's something I can't really go into detail on, but it's quite possible that sometime this year we will be announcing that we are working on an original for Nebula. So... That'll be very exciting if that happens. Um, other than that, we will also, yeah, be giving our members more behind the scenes and more little bits. Maybe we'll even put some of the some of the interviews that we're doing. I spent an hour on the phone with um, Christy Rice and another hour with Scott Christian Sava the other day, two amazing artists that I'm sure many of you know about. And there is no way we can put those full hour long interviews, even in the extended version of this video. The extended so, version could blow out to like five hours. I think it's I think it's like four hours of conversations just with other artists at this point. So I think we might even look at putting one or two of them or even like a slightly shorter version um, in our members area on YouTube, just as like, these are really good conversations to listen to. So you can get a bit more of that raw version of that. Um, but I want to make sure that in all the videos we do this year, that we do talk to more artists. I really want to look at like this art community and just the creator community. I'm not just talking artists. I'm talking one of the other people I've interviewed for this creativity video is Thomas Frank, who is an amazing um, creator on YouTube who teaches people all about productivity. He has his own products and everything that we actually use here in our office. And he's an amazingly creative person in a maybe way that people wouldn't expect. So we've talked to him for this video as well. And we've got a whole bunch of different creators that I would love to bring into our channel this year to feature them and show them so that you can find other channels to watch as well, but also just to get a whole bunch of other voices on the topics that I want to get to and to help us build out that community a bit more because I do think that the creator community is an amazing thing. And I have loved meeting so many other creators. Um, so the other stuff, we are also going to be um, working on products next year. Um, a few of them I think you'll probably expect. Like we have um, the 2024 coloring planner, which is still available for sale. We've already started planning 2025. <laughs> um, we have, I think we still have some 2024 planners left. So even though it's almost the end of January, it's not too late to get one of those. Um, we're starting to work on 2025 and we sent out a survey because I really want feedback to see what we need to change. Um, one of the things that we will be looking at this year um, is we're going to look at bringing out a second smaller planner because I know that the planner is quite big and for some people that's a reason not to buy it. So this year we're going to be bringing out a smaller version as well. We're figuring out the logistics of what that is. It's probably going to look quite different because we can't physically fit all of the big stuff. Is it going to be mini like that video you did? It's not going to be this big. <laughs> um, we're probably looking more at like a B5 or something. Um, but something that's a bit more practical to give people an alternative option. Um, we don't know if that means that people won't buy the big one. That's something we'll just, we'll just figure it out. We just learn as we go. Um, I've also talked to everyone multiple times. And I know Paul Kristen gets so many emails <laughs> about where is Color Cube number three? Well, I did talk about this in a live stream last year and said that my plan for the Color Cube is that the third one would be different. That it won't just be another collection because I feel like, I feel like two is enough. And if two's not enough, that's okay. But most people, 
don't need a third one. <laughs> um, but what I would like to do is use the third color cube. And I'll, I'm going to be frank right now and say it's probably not going to be called the color cube. And it's probably not going to look like the color cubes. But I want to create a special edition texture pack. Um, I want to help you to, especially for drawing and coloring, to draw things like glass, hair, skin, fur, metals, um, fabric, like textures, essentially. So we are planning that now, trying to figure out what that looks like. Last year, I said I wouldn't be working on it until this year. And that is accurate because last year was so full of everything. But we are finally working on it. And we're starting to look at what does that look like? Do the cards look the same or are they completely different? Because this is our current color cube cards. But maybe if we're making this new set, maybe the box will be different. Maybe it won't be a cube. Maybe the cards won't even be the same size. We're... We're brainstorming all these things and trying to work out how to make it the best product that we can without being stuck in it has to match what we've already done because I feel like that, if anything, is going to limit this and I don't want to create limitations. I want to make it the best, most useful product that we can for you. So to be realistic, it's probably quite a few months away, but we will be keeping you updated in that. Um, as we start developing prototypes, I'll be posting all that stuff in our members area for them to sort of give feedback on and stuff. And down the track in a few months, I guess I'll let you know where we are with that because the first color cubes took me six months to make after I had designed all the pictures for the color catalog. So we're probably not realistically gonna have anything ready until much later this year because it's just gonna take time and that's just the way it is. But I do have a few other products that we are working on right now. One being I am designing a new coloring book, but instead of doing it on Amazon, like I've done in the past with 30 pages, we're treating this as if it's the first coloring book I've ever made and we're starting over because we want to build something that's really, really high quality, like what we've done with our planners and with the color cube. We're going to get it manufactured ourselves. We probably will sell it on Amazon and that's something I'm going to do a whole video about when we're ready because I'm going to need your help to get the listings up on Amazon if we do. Um, but it's going to be like 80 pages and it's going to be nice, thick, hardcover good quality coloring book that you can take everywhere, but you can also gift to someone um, that maybe is new to coloring. And that's something that um, I've already started doing drawings for. And, and some of the drawings we're taking older drawings and I'm reworking them because again, we're treating this like our first ever coloring book. So there will be some pictures that you've seen before, but like out of the 80, like 60 of them will be brand new. <laughs> it's it's going to be a very new, very exciting book. And as a part of that, I'm also spending the month of, well, I'm starting now, but our second video that's probably going to come out late February is all about me relearning to draw because as I work on this new book, I want to make sure my skills are better and I want to make better art than I have in the past. And one of the things that I have never personally done is just dedicated time to learning to draw. I've always kind of just winged it and always kind of just gone with what I already know or just, I don't know, just spent a very, very long time on things that shouldn't be that hard. And I decided, well, maybe this is the first topic that I dive deep in. Maybe I relearn how to draw. And I know I have an advantage over people that are starting from zero, but I'll tell you what, as soon as I started drawing, day two and day three, I felt like the worst artist in the world. It was very challenging and it has been very interesting. I have a new sketchbook here that I started to fill because I have never filled a sketchbook in my life. And so I wanted to fill a sketchbook um, as a part of this video. I realized that I've got a long way to go because I think I'm up to, <laughs> to here. Can we have a sneak peek? We can have a, a sneak peek. While you're finding one, I've I've held off, but it's, it's been two minutes. <laughs> Shane's like, I need to interrupt and Sarah won't stop talking. I need to interrupt. Um, is it Melville um, became a gold member. Oh, so Mel. That's really exciting. Yes. And I just wanted to mention that. Thank you, Mel. We, I, yeah, we see Mel all the time already, so that's exciting that we'll get to see you even more. Um, so the new coloring book, um, someone's actually asked too that um, what's the theme. I'm still kind of figuring it out, but I am leaning towards... The, coloring. <laughs> coloring. I'm leaning towards the theme of, like, finding beauty in life. Like... I know that sounds really vague and, and whimsical and whatever, but <laughs> I'm drawing, like as I'm drawing, and a lot of this is what I'm discovering that I like drawing as I'm trying to draw. I've been, I started by trying to draw people, right? This is, this is my day one 
This is, I don't even know if you can see, wait, no, I hold it here. <laughs> uh. But this is like, I started from scratch in going, I need to learn to draw people. Cause I've always, if you look at my coloring pages, I avoid people. I've only drawn a few and I tend to draw just the face. I've always avoided people. Um, so I started with that. And that's part of, in your coloring book, I want to bring a few people in. Um, I also want to do a lot of plants. So let me just, uh, let, let me show you some of the book and then we'll talk through the coloring book. I can give book you a quick again. overhead shot if you want. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Notes away. So let me, let me give you a skim. This is like a sneak preview of the second video that's coming. Um, so these are some of my really early stuff. It's kind of like some are good and some are bad because some days I followed tutorials, some days I just winged it. That's all, I guess, a part of the process of learning. I tried focusing on different things like lips um, and just working on that. There's some things that I was like, yeah, I hate this and just got rid of it all together. Um, so I did a lot of just taking different tutorials and part of the video is I'm gonna be going through different tutorials that other people do so that hopefully I can recommend. Um, I don't know if Shane needs to cut back to the main camera. I literally bought every book that I could find that was highly recommended on how to draw. So I wanted, I told you, I go all in when I go all in. So this is my pile of drawing books. <laughs> uh, that one's not a drawing book, actually. That's a creativity book. But uh, I've overwhelmed myself, as I typically do, because this is just how I roll. If I'm gonna do something, I go all in. And so this is me going all in on, I wanna learn to draw again. Um, so back to the art. Um, I really like how this eye came out. That was one that, um, sorry, I know I'm saying um a lot. This is one that was from a reference photo, but also following a tutorial. And obviously that one looked really cool. I mean, eyes is something I have drawn a few times. So a little bit easier than some of the other stuff that was completely out of my comfort zone. I had a go after some practice of drawing my son, Oliver. Um, he asked me to draw him and he told me, yes, I'm very hard to draw. So I made that note there because I thought that was cute. Um, so that was something that I did try from a photo, no like tracing points or anything. In the past, what I would do if I wanted to do realistic is I would sort of draw a few points by tracing it to kind of give myself a frame of reference and then try to draw. I'm trying to break that and learn how to draw without requiring that. So lots of different things here. Um, this was just me practicing different pencil groups. So, you know, drawing like this, drawing like this, all different kinds of stuff like that. Um, had to go more cartoon style because I'm still trying to figure out what's my style. I don't know. I've not really explored this. So having a go at that. Um, working on, again, these are from reference photos of trying to, trying to get proportions right because proportions is something I always really struggle with, which is why I rely on tracing some points. And so when it comes to people, proportions are pretty important. Um, then I went into my flowers because I just needed a spot that was like, oh, just, this just feels more like my comfort zone. Um, so I have been drawing a lot of flowers. This page is actually from a tutorial from Christy Rice's channel. This was from Shada Campbell's channel. And then in some of the other pages, I've done my own and started to just play around with drawing flowers. Um, how to go at some cats. Can't not draw cats, but these are like real rough sketches of poses. They're not intended to be finished. That's something that I'll probably keep working on. Um, how to go on my own off some pictures. And then just lots more repetition of practicing different things. Um, and then back to the flowers, because again, this is my comfort zone. So these ones are mine, my drawings. They're not, um, these were not from tutorials. At this point, I feel like I started to get more comfortable in drawing them like with a reference photo but not copying it exactly and actually trying to create some of my own art um so a lot of this like i'll talk through more when i when i do the video you'll see me uh feeling frustrated through some of these <laughs> um and then these i actually so these are a little bit of a sneak preview of a few of the pictures that i started to work on for the new coloring book so i really liked you would have noticed on this page here um i really liked i found the fuchsias and they're beautiful flowers. And I thought they look really whimsical and almost like little fairies or something. So I decided to start working on um, some pages that we could, that I could build into the coloring book with some fuchsias. And then I found these cool mushrooms and I thought they look so fun and arty. So that's one that I drew um, from a photo. I sort of adjusted it to make it my own as well. Um, Sarah? Yes. We have two new members. Oh, Sparkling amazing. Sparkling Rose Creations and Sandra and ADC Art Attack has joined in. Oh, hi, Anthony. Good to see you. <laughs> um, you've missed all of the news up to now. We're just looking in my sketchbooks. 
<laughs> you'll have to watch the replay for all the updates and what's actually happening. So at the moment, we're just, um, this is actually pretty much the end of the book anyway, of trying to draw different things. And um, I had to draw a squirrel if you watched my, no, that was only in the members area, I think. Um, I did a vlog of when I was in the USA and we discovered squirrels and we don't have squirrels in Australia. In New York. Yeah, in New York, we found squirrels and I was a little bit like a little kid again, trying to feed the squirrels and get them to be my friend. Um, you which very I, much look like a tourist. I was a tourist. I was allowed to look like a tourist. But like it was really obvious. <laughs> All the Americans were watching me just like, what's she doing? And in fact, I Googled um, how to make a squirrel your friend or whatever. And the first result that came up was, why are Australians so obsessed with the common squirrel? <laughs> Because we don't have them here and they're so cute and their tails go like, like, like this. In fact, okay, so here's the thing. If you are in America and you do have squirrels around, you have to try this and report back. You're about back. to embarrass yourself, aren't you? I, I do it all the time. It's fine. Uh, so I've been informed by someone in America and my friend in New York tried this and has said that it proved to be true for him. Where if you want to get a squirrel to come up to you, you do this. If you do this to them, maybe it's like, I don't know, some kind of mating sign or something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you don't want to do it. Um, he said the squirrel ran straight up to him. And I spent the whole time in New York trying to get squirrels to come to me, giving them fake food. They, they were too smart. Um, but apparently this is the foolproof way to get a squirrel to come to you, to replicate its tail. And it will come to you because it sees the movement. Don't know. Please try it out. Someone verify for me if that is accurate. <laughs> then we'll find out. Um, so that is what's happening there. I am very excited about the new coloring book. So it's, it's going to have a lot of nature. It's going to have some animals, which is something that I've tend to, um, avoid drawing some people, which I tend to avoid drawing. And so I have been really working hard to try and learn how to draw a lot of that stuff that I kind of just either avoid or I'd spend a whole day trying to draw rather than an hour. And so. Aussie crafters join the stream. Oh. Hi, we were talking about you earlier in a really good way, I promise. Um, so really good to see you. Um, it's nice. I actually, see, this is this is what I mean about um, community. I love it when other artists show up at each other's streams. When we get to feature each other in our videos. And that's something I want to do more this year. So it's very exciting. Um, so I, I, I did write notes for what I want to talk about today. And I think I kind of just went off and, and talked because I you just... You were talking about squirrels. Because I just spoke from my heart and we just, um, so if you are, if you have just jumped in the stream, the first half of this stream, I talked a lot about what I'm going to do this year because it's going to look quite different. My channel is changing in a really exciting way. Um, and so things are going to look a bit different. So if you did miss that, or if you've come in halfway, please make sure that you go back and watch the replay when we finish up. Um, I actually didn't even expect, I've actually been talking for an hour and I didn't think it would go that long, but that's just me. I just like to talk. Um, <laughs> and, and then I, then I look at the uh, comments and I just get uh, distracted. What I do want to say is, um, the last video that I did it for, for last year was a bit of an experimental one of me trying to see, um, how can we do this differently? And we did take a bit longer in December and I think. Maybe I, maybe I got the thumbnail wrong and the title wrong in that video because it's had less views than any video last year. And that was a little bit heartbreaking because it's a video that I really poured the time into. And it's actually the, the end art piece, which I have here is one of the favorite, my favorite things I have ever painted. And I'm going to hang it in my house. So if you haven't seen that video, please go check it out. But this is an example of, um, I put so much into this last video to see how it went, but then maybe it didn't, maybe it didn't get the views because we titled it wrong. Um, but we took a risk on that and the thumbnail, I was really excited about cause it took a long time to the, the members again, we'll see the behind the scenes of how that thumbnail was taken. And it was quite an interesting photo shoot to try and maneuver. You actually um, got a wedding dress for this video. Yeah, I, I bought a wedding dress for this video. That's the level we're talking about, everyone. <laughs> Commitment. Committed. <laughs> uh, maybe I should be committed. I don't know. Um, this video was one that I was really excited about. And so it was disappointing to see the views go down. And I think part of me is prepared that next year that might happen as well. But 
I'm confident that if we make these videos and I pour in the effort and the heart that I've just talked to you all about that I want to do for next year, that eventually people will see that this is what we do in every video and maybe then they'll go back and they'll watch the others. Maybe they'll even go back and watch my, my video where I painted with trash. I have to show you. Um, here, here's, here's, the, here's the end result. So spoiler, <laughs> this is what I painted with trash. And if you don't know what I mean by that, then you need to watch the video because it was a lot of fun. It was also very challenging, but it's like my favorite art piece that I have ever made. Um, and that was what that video was last year. And this year I wanna do more like that. I wanna push the limits and do stuff that takes a bit more of a challenge, but that also I can dive into how other people, um, how other people create art and explore new things. And if the views don't follow, that's okay because that's not how we're defining ourselves. That's not how we're finding our value and we're okay taking that risk for a bit. I do hope that as an audience, you'll come along and that you'll trust me in, I am trying to make videos that will inspire you, that you'll walk away with, that you'll have to share with other people and that you'll want to watch more than once. I think we're done chasing trends. We might still do like, so the, the, Examples of videos that we will do again, like the testing every pencil. I mean, I have promised everyone that I'm gonna do a light fast test. The reason I haven't done a light fast test yet is because in my head, I've made it into such a big project and I want to be so accurate with it that as a result, I haven't even started, but it's on the list for this year. And I will make sure I do it justice and we will be thorough and we will go in depth. And that's something that I'm really excited to try, but really scared to try because I don't know what I'm doing but that is half of the fun. And that is a lot of what this channel is about is accepting the scary and stepping out of my comfort zone and challenging myself and challenging you to not let fear stop us from trying new things and maybe discovering a new realm of creativity that we haven't discovered before. I don't even know if colored pencils is my favorite art form because I haven't tried enough other stuff for a decent amount of time to really figure out what I love and what, is the most creative. Pencils were honestly the first thing I picked up and I love them. But I don't even know if I wanna keep all my pencils next year. That's probably a discussion for much later on because I feel like that's probably a big scary step, even for a lot of you watching. Of, of what does it mean if Sarah gives away her pencils? I don't know. We're gonna figure that out. But um, I don't wanna talk for too much longer. I have talked for a very long time, um, but just to make sure that I haven't missed anything. Um, coloring, so that you know if you're watching, coloring has always been my main thing, but I've always tried to stretch a little bit beyond that. But it still will be a core part of what we do. So like when we do live streams, I'll be coloring. I'm making the coloring book, that's a big thing. And in a lot of other videos, I'll probably find a way to tie it back into a coloring style or you know, mixed media, Show, figure out can we do mixed media in the coloring book, stuff like that. But also I have my blog on my website where I've always tried to do more tutorial based stuff over there. I used to do it on YouTube and now I've kind of moved it more to just being on the blog. We will look at putting more there at increasing all of that um, for creativity in general, but also specifically for coloring. And because my team can't do everything because I can't possibly do a million things, we're gonna look at bringing in other artists to assist with that and bring in other artists to be guest posters or maybe even just permanently in-house writers that are all contributing so that that becomes another place to showcase the community, to showcase other artists, but also a place that just becomes an amazing resource for everyone who's watching. And um, there may be videos in that, they may not, we'll figure out how that works. We're still trying to figure out what a lot of this looks like, but I know that it's what we wanna do. Um, so we will be doing a lot of that in bringing in other artists to help us write content for the blog so that it's, it's a connection for you to find them and discover them, but also a way for you to just have all the resources that you need when it comes to learning adult coloring or just being creative in general. Um, and I think that's kind of everything on my list. <laughs> um, I am incredibly grateful for the support that everyone has provided. Uh, like every time you watch a video, every time you leave a comment, I still read every comment, even though I'm getting less and less time to reply. Um, I still intentionally read every comment that comes on the videos because that matters to me. I don't want to ever reach a point where we disconnect from our community when you are the guys that, that, that you, you are the people who have built us to where we are and you support us, you buy our products, you do all this stuff. And so I will continue to put that first. That's why 
we have hired Kristen to be a community manager because it matters to me that our community is looked after. That when you email, that we see those emails that don't just go in a big inbox that's got 10,000 emails in it. They come through and Kristen reads every single one and they get distributed around the team. And I even get to see a lot of the fan emails. I had a beautiful email this week um, from a family and I got to do a little video for a four-year-old who is, oh no, she's turned five, who watches this channel. And um, we got to make a very, very special video for little Kaziah. And it was wonderful getting to actually see some of the stuff that she was showing and showing me her coloring books and stuff like that. And it was beautiful. And those are the moments. This is why we do this channel. This is why we are here. And I want you to know that, that ultimately everything we're doing, it's not about, it's not a, I know that it sounds really cliche and unbelievable to say it's not about the money, but for context, I don't even look at our finances. I don't look at our analytics. I don't look at our AdSense because for me, it's about the community. Yes, we don't ignore that stuff. Shane, Shane deals with all that, <laughs> but I genuinely want things like our members area to be about us connecting with you and to not be about yay extra money every month but actually about yes now we can connect with people now we can can have a closer access point to to people that um want that and so we try to offer that um i think we might i might just um officially finish up the stream here um we do need to bring moscow over for a hello maybe shane can bring him over in his bed because he looks pretty happy and he's he's quite bad <laughs> and I might just hang around for a few minutes to answer some more of your questions, but uh, thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting me. And thank you for joining me this next year as, as we come. Oh, look at this. Here we go. Oh, Moscow. He's been sleeping and he's come to say hello. Say hi. Are you going to be in our coloring book? Maybe. I haven't really decided yet. Um, so let's just say hello while well, Moscow's here. Let's have a few read of some comments. Um, Shane, you are free to interrupt me again. <laughs> Big thank you to April, who's done a super chat here, and she's left a comment as well for you to read. I better go read it. Hi, April. Can I read it aloud? Lurky here, but I faithfully follow the channel, have the colour catalogue and the colour cubes. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, April. I really appreciate that. And f there's been a few people who have asked how to join the Discord. Okay, so the Discord... Oh, we've got trucks beeping at us or someone. Um, the Discord is for our members who are... Shane, correct me if I'm wrong on this. Silver and above get access to our Discord. Uh, we will eventually, I think, change those names. They weren't supposed to be permanent names, the bronze, silver, gold, teal. They're supposed to be placeholders at some point. <laughs> We're going to get you guys to help us come up with better names for our membership because like... I Maybe after the stream, Natalie can um, do a community post for our members. Yeah, to decide to on some names. Oh no, yeah, for that. For, for how that. to join the Discord. <laughs> for how to join Discord. So yeah, once you're a silver member, um, then we'll post a new community post now so it's fresh because I don't think we can pin them, which would be really helpful so that um, we can give you the link to join the Discord and come and say hello. Um, it has been a little bit quiet lately and I that's, that's my fault as well, but we're going to ramp it up this year. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, it's going to be wonderful. Heidi, thank you for your comment. You... Um, have yeah it's great seeing you as a member as well and thank you for your comments um i don't know i think i think we're done what do you think moscow i need to get back to uh writing the script for this new video <laughs> getting through my ten thousand pages ten thousand pages no not that big ten thousand words of um of notes about creativity and it's very exciting um so i guess that's it bye moscow he's purring that's his way of saying goodbye